In the 1970s and 80s, India notched up notable technological achievements. Aryabhata, its indigenous satellite was launched. Wing Commander Rakesh Sharma made history as the first Indian in space. The smiling Buddha operation spotlighted India's global nuclear capabilities, underlining strength and growth potential. This era marked a crucial juncture, propelling India towards swift technological progress. We had the talent, we had the skill, we had the knowledge. The only thing holding us back was the availability of resources. The rise in accomplishments also meant a rise in the demand for resources. One such resource was supercomputers. Machines that could fuel our efforts and help us take the next big step towards becoming a technologically advanced nation. In the hope of support and cooperation, the Prime Minister of India looked westward, seeking high-performance supercomputers. However, the rapid growth and advancement of technology in India were perceived as a threat by several developed nations. They feared that a developing nation like India might use the technology to create weapons and missiles instead of developing satellites and forecasting weather. The Indian scientific community was denied access to technology. Multiple restrictions were placed on the import and export of these supercomputers, putting India in a precarious position. Welcome to A Century of Stories, brought to you by IDFC First Bank, always you first. I am Kunal Vijaykar and today, I'm going to tell you the story of India's first supercomputer, Param 8000. India's foray into supercomputing commenced in the late 1980s, primarily triggered by the US halting the export of the Cray supercomputer. Fearing India's nuclear ambitions, the United States imposed sanctions on the country under the Missile Technology Control Regime, MTCR, prohibiting India from importing a new Cray system. Denied and dejected, then Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi turned to the Indian scientific community to find a way out. He called upon a man considered to be the greatest computer scientist of India at that time, Mr. Vijay Pandurang Bhatkar. Rajiv Gandhi had three simple questions for him. One, can we build a supercomputer? Two, how long will it take? And three, how much money would it cost? To the first question, Bhatkar, despite having no first-hand experience with a supercomputer and only glimpsing a picture of the Cray, confidently asserted, yes, we can. In response to the inquiry about the timeline, he promptly replied, less than what it will take for us to try importing Cray from the United States. And as for the financial aspect, Bhatkar stated, the entire effort, including building an institution, developing the technology and commissioning, and installing India's first supercomputer, will cost less than acquiring the Cray. Determined to fulfill the mission, Bhatkar embarked on the task. The Center for Development of Advanced Computing, CDAC, was founded in 1987 in Pune, Maharashtra, under the Department of Electronics. Bhatkar, along with other scientists, gathered in Pune with a shared determination to propel India into a new era of computing and self-sufficiency. Hello there, get ready for a financial game changer. Introducing monthly interest credits on your IDFC First Bank savings account. With IDFC First Bank, your savings account isn't just a place to store money. It's a place where your money grows every month. A unique monthly compounding interest means that you not only earn interest on your balance, but also on your previous month's interest. Imagine the possibilities. 
you earn interest on interest, which can significantly boost your savings over time. It's like your money is working harder for you. Open your savings account today at idfcfirstbank.com. The task was obviously easier said than done. The fact of the matter was that India simply did not have the advanced chip and cooling technology essential for handling such large volumes of computing. But in typical Indian fashion, we shine our brightest in the times of darkness and ambiguity. Mr. Bhatkar had a moment of genius. What if? Instead of developing one central system capable of doing large computation, we split the computation into thousands and thousands of smaller machines and make them work parallel to each other. It was called parallel processing. Dr. Bhatkar acquired off-the-shelf unique servers and workstations. Combined with various in-house technologies, a multiprocessor prototype took shape in 1990. In a span of three years, we achieved the extraordinary. With everyone involved working diligently, CDAC successfully completed its task well before the proposed deadline. India's first indigenous supercomputer, Param 8000, was unveiled in 1991. For the first time, a developing nation accomplished a remarkable feat in advanced computer development. The global community was taken aback by this unprecedented achievement, with many expressing skepticism about whether Param truly qualified as a supercomputer. To address these doubts, Bhatkar decided to showcase the Param prototype at the 1990 supercomputing show in Zurich. Notably, Param 8000 secured the position of the world's second fastest supercomputer outranked only by an American system. Upon closer inspection, it was revealed that Param 8000 boasted a performance of five G-flops, making it 28 times faster than the Cray XMP system that the Indian government had initially considered purchasing. The computer received acclaim and was exported to countries like Germany, the United Kingdom and Russia. Global media commended the determination of Indians, resulting in headlines worldwide exclaiming, Denied a supercomputer? Angry India proves itself. To date, 52 Param systems have been imported worldwide, making it as India's most successful self-produced computing system. Its triumph led to the creation of an entire series of advanced high-performance systems, including Param 10,000, Param Padma, Param Yuva, and the current pinnacle, Param Siddhi AI. These systems find homes in various government organizations and institutions across the country, including IIT Guwahati and NIT Sikkim. Currently, the Indian government not only aims to install over 60 systems across the country, but also to interconnect them through a grid computing network. In the face of adversity, Bhatkar showcased that India not only participates, but leads in the supercomputing race. Param, meaning supreme, and priced at just 350,000 US dollars, against Cray's $10 million forced a global reckoning. At that time, more than 15 countries lined up to acquire Param, compelling a humbling reduction in Cray's cost. The story of India's first supercomputer is more than just a technological milestone. It is a narrative of determination, commitment, and a profound resolve to never underestimate the power of Indian ingenuity. This is Kunal Vijaykar and you've been listening to a century of stories brought to you by IDFC First Bank. Always you first. In the next episode, I'll tell you the story of the Indian Space Research Organization or ISRO as we all know it. <laughs>